back. We are starting the second lecture of Unit 1. This lecture is actually um, one of our Art Impulse lectures, the lecture Making a Mark. Normally for most units I start with the Art Historical lecture and then usually head to the Art Medium, but for this particular unit, for Unit 1, I felt like uh, the first thing after talking about the Paleolithic and Neolithic was to really kind of hone in on that fundamental impulse which was the, the desire to to make a mark to say I'm here so first quick review you should have already watched the Paleolithic to Neolithic lecture and be pretty familiar with uh, what we talked about in terms of the artwork of the Paleolithic and some of what we can maybe gather or guess about the cultures of the Paleolithic period the transition from the Paleolithic or the Upper Paleolithic to the Mesolithic and then the transition to the Neolithic um, and if you remember the Neolithic we talked a little bit about some of the most the new the newest um, research uh, the site at Kablaki Tepe and some other new sites in Turkey that are shedding even more light on that transition from the Mesolithic to the Neolithic. Um, so, like I said, today's lecture, and this probably should be a two-part lecture, today's lecture is called Making a Mark, um, and first thing I want to say is that uh, unlike uh, some art appreciation courses where there is a certain amount of thematic content. I'm less interested in talking about the themes used in art and I'm more interested in talking about the fundamental impulses of the art and the distinction I make between those are themes are generally like what people want to say with art versus the fundamental impulses are not just what people say with art but the fundamental reasons why they make art and so here we're starting with probably the most fundamental reason why people make art, which is just simply the, the fundamental reason to say I was here, um, that here I am, and uh, to make our mark in the world in some way. So um, another thing I want to say before we get too far along is this kind of basic structure of an opening page where I kind of give you an outline of the whole structure of the lecture. I, and then also usually have a grid of some of the artwork that we're going to be talking about through the lecture. Uh, this is kind of a try to keep this a standard structure for every lecture. So the starting point for me uh, thinking about this is the Chauvet handprint. If you if you remember us talking about Chauvet Cave and we talked about like the, the wall of lions and in Chauvet Caves there's one wall that's covered in handprints um, and the way these handprints were made is the artist would put their you know um, they would kind of like uh, put some sort of uh, material on the rock wall um, like a plaster then they would put their hand over it and then they would blow pigment um, over their hand and their hand would basically uh, become like a like a resist like a stencil right and they blow like this red uh, pigment powder and everywhere that their hand didn't would get dark with the red and everywhere that their hand blocked it would just stay light. Um, and that's how these, these hand print marks are made. And what's, one of the things that's interesting is that there's one hand, one particular mark, where it's clearly the same person. Everywhere in the cave where we see this particular hand, because this hand is very distinctive. It appears that the person maybe broke their finger at some point in their life and that their pointer finger is a little bit um, a little bit crooked and, and a little bit deformed and it's really narrow below the knuckle. And it looks the same in various places where most people's handprints are anonymous. This person's handprint is specific and it, we can tell it is a particular person. And from that, what I take from that is that in a way that's kind of like a fundamental aspect of so much artwork that we are, we are trying to make something distinctive, a mark that represents us and us alone. And so um, I want you to think about that impulse in, in artwork and, and how we see that idea throughout all of history. Um, and but, you know, all of art history, but we also see it um, in contemporary art. And while I'm talking about that, let's just go back. Just wanted you to think about some of these comparisons. We're going to talk about Susan Rothenberg uh, 
a little bit later on, but I just wanted you to think about the kind of the connection between um, this most ancient art and some very contemporary art. And so some of the artists that I want to introduce you to in terms of making marks are some uh, modernist and uh, contemporary uh, artists who very much make artwork that's just about the specific way that they put a mark down on their page. Um, and I chose uh, both Bryce Martin and Cy Twombly uh, because they're artists where mark making is an extremely important part of their work and because the kind of mark that they make is very specific to them, uh, very specific to their process, and but specific to their hand and that their hand, their mark making, therefore is distinctive that you could easily recognize it anytime you looked at it. And but the other point I want to make is that this kind of impulse, whether we're talking about it, this impulse in in contemporary art or this impulse in Paleolithic art, probably the most the connection that's most similar to that would be graffiti, because graffiti is fundamentally that impulse, the impulse to make a thing, to put a thing on a surface to say, I was here. This is one of the reasons why uh, trains are such a popular canvas for graffiti artists is because they are a means of, of spreading the word as to I was here. So I include um, some old things like uh, this very old tag, uh, Taki 183, uh, consider a pretty fundamental root of, uh, of tagging. Before we talk a little bit more about graffiti though, uh, there are some basic definitions that you should know. Um, the difference between the word graffito and graffiti. And, um, and you know, keep in mind that the word graffito, right, which just means uh, writing, and that graffiti is just simply the plural version of that. But in the English speaking world, graffiti has come to mean something more specific, a specific type of scratch mark on a, on a surface or a specific type of marking on um, and oftentimes when we think of graffiti, we almost always think about it in terms of spray paint. Um, in the graffiti world, there are different terms that people use, a, a tag, a throw up, as well as some other ones. And these refer basically to the amount of time that uh, something is put up. A tag is generally the uh, single line letters and is the quickest form of what a, what a graffiti artist would, would produce. But all of these are distinct from what we would might talk about when we talk about street art, which is a, a separate topic. And we'll be talking a little bit more about that as well. I think there's definitely some interaction between street art and graffiti, um, some influence, but they are in some ways uh, distinct movements. So here's some more graffiti that I particularly uh, enjoy. Uh, like the saber pieces are amazing and I am not by any means an expert on it. I had to ask lots of lots of friends for advice as to which uh, graffiti artist to highlight. And here's some few others. I really like the uh, uh, Ether and the Utah piece. Or is it Utah? I don't know. Um, it was a pretty cool piece. Uh, very... Uh, and I I think another thing I want to say relating to graffiti is how some people, in terms of the these kind of piece works, these uh, masterpiece works, where some people really bring a very illustrative flair to it. So what is the difference between graffiti and street art? I like my definition mentioned earlier, you know, some, some would say that street art is just graffiti done by people who went to art school. Um, I think generally street art, there is more of a social conscious approach. It's less about the artist just simply saying, I was here, and more also about the artist um, trying to make social commentary. And But there's also aesthetic differences. Um, street art tends to be a little bit more open to the aesthetics of the larger contemporary art world, whereas graffiti is aesthetically very focused on the aesthetics of graffiti and maybe some other kind of graphic art such as illustration and less graphic design also some influence from uh, like um, tattoo art whereas like I said yeah 
uh, street art, we see a lot more influ 